You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday, May 9th. I'm Ken Buffa. Sounding the alarm about the opioid crisis on this Fentanyl Awareness Day. I need this to stop. It is a disease that it needs to be helped. A grieving mother who just lost her son last month to an overdose was among those speaking out against the deadly epidemic. Officials say addiction is in every community and the number of overdose deaths are staggering. We were appalled when the overdose rate was 50,000. It was obscene when it was 75. Now, because of the presence of fentanyl, we are over 100,000 deaths annually. Opioids are the leading cause of death for adults between the ages of 18 and 45 years old here in the U.S. And four fallen Nassau police officers are being honored in Albany today. Officer Robert Negri and Detective First Class Matthew Perlunger died of cancer linked to Ground Zero. Detectives Charles Vroom and Hector Nunez passed away after contracting COVID on the job. Their names were added to the police memorial in Albany during a ceremony this afternoon. And Suffolk County police are searching the Great South Bay for a missing boater again. As Newsday has reported, the Coast Guard halted its search for James Jaronzik. The 28-year-old fell into the water from a speedboat off the Babylon Cove on Sunday. And a heart condition may be to blame for the death of a mink whale. The 24-foot mammal washed up on the sand in West Hampton Beach just yesterday. An examination of the remains was performed before the whale was buried. This is the eighth large whale in the Atlantic Marine Conser Conservation Society that has responded to this year. And in your health news, an influential National Health Panel is recommending that women start getting mammograms at 40 years old instead of 50. The new advice from the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force comes after recent evidence showed more women in their 40s are developing breast cancer. The panel believes earlier screenings can detect breast cancer sooner and save more lives. The Syosset School District voted unanimously to retire its Braves mascot and name. It's the latest in a story you saw first in Newsday. Last night's vote follows an order by the Board of Regents to remove Native American mascots and imagery from public schools. One parent who spoke at the meeting supports the ban. The symbols, images, and mascots teach non-Native American children that it's acceptable to participate in culturally abusive behavior that perpetuate inaccurate misconceptions about American Indian culture. Science, its board estimates that making changes to the high school's football field end zone and scoreboard would cost about $70,000. Switching gears now, happy birthday, Billy Joel, the piano man, has a lot to celebrate. The Higgsville native's record-shattering MSG residency has been extended until September. He played his 91st monthly show just last Friday. Now you can read 74 reasons why Long Islanders love Billy Joel on our homepage. Just click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. All right, time now for a look at your Long Island weather. We're in the 40s today with mostly clear skies, but the good stuff, well, that's on the way tomorrow with highs near 70. So let's take a closer look at tomorrow. Sunny all day with temperatures in the mid 60s. It looks like it's going to be a real nice one. An old East Rockaway Bank is being converted into a new theater. Our Rachel Weiss has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Outside, it's a bank built in 1930, but inside, a transformation is taking place. This is the dream of Tony Leone. He and his wife, Marla D'Urso, bought this building three years ago and are converting it into a performing art space. They'll call it the Strong Box Theater. I was an actor in the theater in the Buffalo circuit, and I always wanted to have my own theater. We made an appointment, saw the bank, and we decided basically on the spot that this was it. So far, the building has been gutted, but the biggest task of all was to remove that one enormous fixture that you'll find in any bank. Right now, I'm standing in the spot where the vault used to be. But there are some elements of the building that will stay exactly the same. And we're going to preserve the, the facade of the bank. Uh, it's called Strong Box, so we want to kind of keep that bank theme going. So there's a night deposit box that somebody else wanted, and I said, no way, we're not giving that up. Uh, these big windows, we're going to preserve them. And we have preserved the, the doors of the safe deposit boxes to use those as a design element. And of course, that 10-ton vault door isn't going anywhere. 
Tony and Marla also bought the property next door, so soon the adjoining wall will come down to open up the space even more. The strong box will showcase the work of original musicians, dramas, and comedies. We want to be a home for new talent, um, so that's part of the model. Rachel Weiss for Newsday TV. How cool is that? Now to read more on the theater renovation, just go to our homepage and click get more below the Newsday TV video box. A unique boutique is helping some Long Islanders in need. Our Elisa DiStefano has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Every day for the past 40 years, there is a line down that block to receive a free hot meal from the inn in Hempstead. Most take their food to go. Others choose to gather here in the newly renovated Mary Brennan Inn dining room. Every day, the inn provides over 1,200 free meals to Long Islanders in need. So, Jean, you have been showing up yes. and helping people <laughs> here on Long Island every day for 40 years. I've been involved, yes, with the inn since it started 40 years ago. Well, the mission is to help anyone in need with basic necessities of food, shelter, and clothing and help them literally get out of harm's way and to do so while making sure that they're treated with dignity and respect at all times. The meals are prepared and served by volunteers. Right now we're, we're serving basically one meal that's the middle of the day, um, but it's for many people their only meal. We've said 40 years ago, we're still saying it today, anyone on one side of the counter could be on the other and we have to count our blessings and realize we have to share those blessings with others who have not been as fortunate. This is our new building where the boutique has been moved to and all of our donations are being accepted wow. here. And uh, thank you, you can come in, good morning. This is where all the clothing comes in as well as food, it gets sorted. They just opened a brand new boutique where guests can shop without worrying about a price tag. You can come in and spend a half hour here shopping. People can also come and take a shower and get cleaned up if they you know, don't have a place where they can shower. What has the response been? The response the, uh, from the guests, they have been overwhelmed. They can't believe that it is so nice. We just hope that they can find a way to not need us anymore. And that's, this is one of those steps that will help them go there. So. Thank you Thank for, you for so doing much. really God's work for the last 40 years. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And for let's hope being let's hope we it. don't we don't need the end for I 40 know, more. Absolutely. But we are so great. For Newsday TV, Elisa DiStefano. Love to see people helping people. Now, for more exclusive stories just like this, go to our homepage and click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Get more of the stories you've seen on Newsday TV at Newsday.com. Plus breaking news, investigations, things to do, restaurants, and other Long Island news you can't get anywhere else. At Newsday.com, covering Long Island like no one else can. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thanks for spending part of your day with us. We'll leave you now with a look at your seven-day forecast.